Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Get Your Paint On this Thursday morning, almost afternoon, not quite afternoon yet. Uh, I am joined with Tony Konacek. Good morning. He's actually second, second camera today. What? It's awesome. Don't ruin it. And Oz. Hey, I'm going to paint something, too. Yeah? I'm going to paint the, oh, are you gonna paint, the paint? lip of a base nice. black. Nice. We right. got Oz to paint. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Excited. I'm talking about. So let's get through a couple of announcements today. Uh, sorry we're running a little late, but we'll rush, rush through these. Uh, pretty, pretty standard loadout. We've got March 10th at 10 a.m. a staff showdown, uh, which I believe is going to be Warcaster. Warcaster is the working plan. on that right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, and then we've got a hobby hangout uh, tomorrow, March 6th. Yeah, and that's uh, so Brian. He's going to be teaching how to uh, magnetize um, Warcaster Warjack loadouts. Awesome. Ooh, cool. Sounds good. <clears throat> well, let's move on to Twitch demotes, subscription. We did it. We got finally. our loot coin, everyone. Uh, we are also really close to our new mystery emote, which yeah. I yeah. low key hope is the uh, center up emote. Yeah, that last one, once we got the loot coin, it kind of pushed us over the edge. So we are dangerously excited. close to a new one. Yeah. I'm excited. Yep, yep. So, yep. yeah, please, uh, if you guys don't mind, subscribe and to our channel on Twitch and get yourself some sweet emotes. Yeah, and use your Prime. And it's use your free. Prime sub, too, because it's free. Uh, and don't forget to re-up it because it will yeah. it'll cancel after yeah. one month. So, That's right. Um, always feel free to go back and do that. Uh, a couple of mini crates here. We've got the Gremlin Spring Break Party, which is available through March 19th, and Double O Debray, which is a VIP model, uh, which begins on February, so it goes through uh, August. So the, the new one will be in August, right? So it's, it's going to go the through. Six months, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got the Bayushi Kyo, which is available through today. Today is the last, last day, day to get that. So if you guys love that model, which I do, that model, the mask is really dope, uh, you got to subscribe today. And then through May 5th, you also have access to the Tengu Sensei. Whoops, I flipped that a little <laughs> early, sorry. What are you doing? <laughs> We're I'm running late. Off Tony's morning. running early. <laughs> <laughs> we got Valeria. It, ba it balances out for about just a to week. be right on time. <laughs> And uh, Red Sonia, who's going to be available for, I think, a few more months, right? Uh, yeah, so it'll be available through July. Um, yeah, that just changed in January, I think. Yeah. yeah. Or so January was the last Both month. these models are sweet. Uh, subscribe to pick up either one of these or both of them. Uh, and let's move on to the model for today. Oh, hold on. we got one more thing to talk about. Do our, yeah, our big news from yesterday. We have a Kickstarter oh, going oh on right now. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm a little flustered this morning. I'm forgetting the most important thing. Warcaster Kickstarter is live as of yesterday. Uh, we funded in about 25 minutes flat. Yeah, so we, we didn't even end the stream excellent. yesterday before yeah. we were funded. Yeah. yeah. So uh, tune into the, the uh, Kickstarter page to check out all the sweet stuff that we've got for sale on there. Um, Please kick back it so you guys can get this stuff in your hands as early as possible. Yeah, and well, once we flip over, I will post the link into the chat. Heck yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And we've been unlocking stretch goals. We have been unlocking stretch goals. Yeah. Uh, the, the map was the last one I checked. The, the map, I believe, just unlocked or is about. I think it unlocked I last night. I think it night. did unlock last night. Yeah. But I don't know what the next one is. I didn't look yet. I'm mostly curious which ones we've That's shown not. off because when, the, when it launched, mm -hmm. we didn't have the wild cards on there yet. But. Correct. We didn't have anything above 300K. Yeah. So um, more of that stuff should be coming soon. Yeah. Um, but we do have stretch goals beyond 300,000. So um, as we get closer to that number and past it, hopefully, uh, we'll be able to update you guys with what those are um, so you guys can get excited. I'm excited. Yeah, I right now we're at... Cool um, stuff coming. Oh, it just updated. What's going on? It's updating. Guess what we're painting today? We're at... Uh, 242,489. Seems Ooh. good. So we're very close to, to, nice. to 250. Nice. Okay. Excellent. Well, keep it going, you guys. Love you guys for, uh, for contributing back and everything. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So, you guys were asking a while ago about some sweet hex shields mm -hmm. and how to paint them. So I think we're going to go over that today. Yeah, well, if, uh, one thing so. I want to point out, and I'm like going to jump on it right now, mm -hmm. is you can see it on your camera that like those hex textures are built into it's the a, model. It's kind of hard to tell because it's all white right now. But if I turn it a little bit at an angle, you can kind of see that hex pattern in there. It's very, very, very lightly sculpted in there. So it does require a little bit of... Um, 
free handing to kind of yeah. get all those little hexagons to to kind of pop out. But we're gonna go over some some sweet strategies to get that all going. Yeah, we talked about putting <sighs> double rifle bayonets on that model just to show off that you could do that and yeah. how and I how said no. they are flippable. We had a lot of questions so far especially yesterday during the live stream about the engineering of these models and while that is not my job um, I have seen some of them now yep. and yeah the the engineering for these parts is so that they can be flipped so that gun can mount on either its right side yes. or its left side with that little this that little this little peg circle peg is the, is the contact point that goes yeah. into the arm yeah um, and the shield obviously can go left or right so it'll work either way uh, I'm just going to finish base coating this stuff, this white in here, such as the undercoat for the yellow ink that we're going to run over it here in a minute. And, um, yeah, Tony, tell us about what you're painting today. Uh, I have the alternate Coalition Weaver. This is the Adepticon exclusive. Um, so without having the other model right here, I don't know exactly what is different about this. The poses look similar, so the but helmet. the helmet is the definitely the big thing. Is so the helmet. Right I'm gonna zoom in just a and, little bit. And uh, the regular weavers holding the staff more, more vertical more, instead yeah, of horizontal. Okay. And I think the hand pose is slightly different, but the helmet's yes. the big deal. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, as, as you kind of talked about on the dev chat yesterday, I was like, you can, you can have more than one weaver in your uh, yeah, and you want to have, so, have more than one of a lot of models in your force. So this is a way to kind of be able to distinguish between two different coalition weavers. Yep. So yeah, and uh, one of the stretch goals on the uh, on the thing right now is the the hunter alt, the no helmet hunter. Mm -hmm. Is it three hundred k? So we are doing other alts for that kind of stuff. Right. Let's keep it going. Uh, so Jordan, I was going to paint up this model. Mm -hmm. Roughly with the studio scheme, and yep. you are going to teach me how to do that. Yeah, so first things first, you're going to need a new paint. Okay. So the new paint new is Biothrall. Where's my camera? There it is. <laughs> which is probably my favorite of the new paints. It's pretty honest. gross color. Uh, yeah, it's like a really weird off white. It's like an ochre. Like it's, it's a weird like a ochre gross color. ochre. It's like a green ochre color. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Screw Fizzle asks, can you, Jordan, show how one paints highlights on the black? What? We did a, we did a, a black highlights yeah, we video. Did. Yeah, we, we did. This is Rex. This is Rex, this is Rex yeah, which is the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, so a couple, what, three or four shows ago? Yeah. The we, last time I was on, I think. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. did, uh, we did Zizorax, and I painted black um, on to... Zizorax's carapace, and we kind of went over how to do that. So that would be a good video for you to go back and check out for that. <coughs> um, and then, Tony, you're going to want to use that um, to base coat the armor. Okay. So basically just, like, everything. Are there any parts I really want to, like, not bother painting? I mean, it doesn't need to be exactly, you know, like the Weaver, but... Uh, I mean, you can go grab the... Nah, it's fine. Okay. We'll just paint it up uh, like this. Chewy, what, about the, what about the staff? Chewy in the chat is asking if that's a new P3 paint label. It's not. It, it is not a that, new P3 paint label. These that's are, a question mark label. Yeah, these are the factory pots of yeah. advanced paints before they're finalized and all the labels are done. So, yeah, they don't have real labels yet. Yep. Yep. Um, when will we see those new paints for, for Sail Dragon Pup? Uh, soon, hopefully. Um, I will be able to update you guys more as I get more information about that. So just keep, <coughs> hold, keep holding on. We're, we're, we're getting towards it. So, um, yeah. We've got some yellow ink here. This is basically right out of the pot. I haven't really watered it down. And we're going to run this over all the parts that we want to be that orange glowy color. And Seanster is asking if we can talk about what models are pre-releasing at Adepticon. And it's, it's just too far away. Yes. A lot. Some of those things literally fly with us in our luggage when we go to the show. It just depends on what's ready in production and what we have enough copies of and that kind of stuff. So we never promise that models will be at a show as a pre-release until Super literally weird. the day of. Super generally. weird. And uh, Ale Ultron 
asks if the Coalition Weaver is a Marcher or a Iron Star, and it's a it's a Marcher, Marcher. model. Yeah. The uh, Iron Star Weaver is the Paladin. Yeah, it kind of has the half crescent on its staff. Yeah. Half crescent? That's redundant, I, I right? I said elongated banana. Elongated banana. <laughs> it, yeah. The it's, it has it's got a, a banana. Digital yeah. banana. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you can see that even from, from the, the things on the backs of all these models are arc antennas. I don't know what if we call them that officially in the, in the narratives or whatever. But the thing that receives the arc transmission from the Warcasters rack is on their backs. And the Coalition Marcher Worlds stuff tends to be dishes. And the Iron Star stuff tends to be elongated. Yeah. Like the like the things that kind of look like wings on the back of that firebrand are the things that pull in the arc from the Warcaster and store it and that kind of stuff. So these I'm painting up those basically the glowy receiver bits. dishes right now. Yeah. So so and the uh, the continuum ones have kind of like a, a upside down teardrop backpack thing, which is their arc, arc receiver or whatever we call them in the narrative. I'm trying not to be, I realize like when I, especially when I get on camera, but I, I even do this at home too, is I'm trying not to be too dainty about the, the painting. I want the it to be clean and good. nice, but you know, remembering that that is not always the case, especially in these early stages, just get in there and get that paint get the on there. there. Yeah, this is a lot, that is a lot easier to do with an airbrush as well, which Jordan, I Jordan's been teaching bit. me how to use an airbrush. It's I have pretty fun. a little bit. Yeah. Exciting. I, he acquired my, my old one before I upgraded to some new airbrushes and uh, I've been kind of teaching him, teaching him the ropes as, as he goes along in his painting experience. I will say my kids were very excited when they saw it. They like spraying water out of it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I will, I'm taking a risk, right? I don't recommend letting your children touch your airbrush. It's pretty delicate, but. But just letting them hold and spray water out of it's pretty. They get a kick out of it. So I'm just building up this uh, this yellow color on the shield. For whatever reason, this yellow ink that I'm using is not maybe an older pot. That's not quite as strong as the newer pots are that I have at my desk. If anybody's looking closely at this firebrand too, it has parts they've never seen before. Yes. Um, oh yeah, it's got, got a different loadout than so the one you've seen. The studio one has the sword, which I believe is the fusion glaive. Yeah, which n normally goes here. Yeah, and then it does have the shield, yep. and then it has the harbinger cannon, which is kind of a machine gun on its shoulder. But this which one has a null yeah. cannon on its shoulder, and then the rifle bayonet combo on its arm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is cool. Oh, I realize I'm probably going to paint that yellow too. Or orange. It also has the jack hunter cortex as opposed to the reflex cortex. That's why its head has that little Cyclops eye instead of its visor. Just get these little, little bits and bobs. All right. <clears throat> so, Oz, can you do me a favor? Maybe. Can you grab the... Uh, oh, never mind. It's up in Danny's office. What are you looking for? Uh... The studio one is up in Danny's. Oh, okay. Here, yeah. I don't want to go all the way up there to grab it. I was going to use it as, as reference so I could kind of show where things were going, but that's that's too far of a too far of a run. It used to be sitting right over there. It did, and then Danny probably stole it from you. Stole it. It happens for work purposes. <laughs> it's Danny. Danny does as Danny does. So, uh, Cheated Fates Joe wants to know what the Jack Hunter Cortex does. So, we saw the Reflex <coughs> Cortex. You can spike to move when you get attacked. We saw that during our live stream game. Jack Hunter Cortex gives you attack bonuses versus other war jacks. Gives you extra action die in your attack rolls. More white dice, basically, when you attack war jacks. And I believe you might have to spike for that, but I'm not, I, I did not print anything out for this stream, so that's off the top of my head. <laughs> Oz's Warcaster rules as remembered. Yeah, basically. And also, things are always subject to change. Like this like is this is Heartfire, by the way, that I'm using. You guys, uh, watered down Heartfire is kind of a 
a washy glaze that I'm kind of just pulling into the edges so that the edges are more saturated with color than the, the inside because you want the inside to be the hottest point. So like these areas in here want to be really bright. Sorry, Oz. No problem. <clears throat> Your show. You talk as much as you want. But yeah, we even when we released the rules yesterday, we even put a lot of um, this like placeholder text and that kind of stuff in there, saying that these rules are not 100% final. Like some things are are still being finalized, especially scenario layouts and that kind of stuff. So basically, our general rule around here is unless it's published, unless you're looking at something that looks like a published thing, it might get tweaked last minute sure. in some tiny way. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump over here. I'm gonna take a quick look at chat, and I'm gonna grab a reference picture of the uh, mm -hmm. the other weaver just so that I can. It'll help me work a little more that quickly. You, the actual model should be like 20 feet to your right. Is the actual model over there? Should be. Still? Should be. Danny only had the, the Alliance stuff up there. Okay, it looks like the boxes are gone. Somebody's like asking what all. the size of the weapon connection points is. I'm guessing so they can buy the proper uh, magnets. This is probably uh, three millimeters. Probably. Roughly. But yeah, like we said at the very beginning of the stream, that circular thing on the side of the rifle is what plugs into the notch in the arm. So it, that's about the size you're looking at. I would hesitate to go out and purchase a million magnets before you have this stuff in your hands, though, because yeah. you never know. Nope. So we're kind of building up that color nice. We're kind of getting there. It's a little bit more orange now. So one of the things you'll notice is I, I do go from... Um, yellow to orange. I go from light to dark on here. Um, and the reason that I do that is because um, you want to start, you want to build up that orange color. And starting with yellow is kind of, you're starting with a lighter color and you're building dark away from it. So you, you keep that really bright yellow that you want. And then you can kind of move it from there. And I'm kind of Mixing this, these paints all together. Uh, I wish I had a, a palette cam so I could show you guys. Um, but I'm kind of actively blending colors together. I'm, I'm so I added Inferno Orange to the mix, um, and then I have a little bit of just straight Inferno Orange on my palette. <clears throat> You can see I'm just hitting the, the edges of this right now. Chat wants to know about faction number four, but they're not going to hear anything about that today. Nope. Oh. You don't get to know that. I will say it was, it's, it, was, uh, it was a little tough because when we were first talking about the original fa two factions before mm -hmm. we talked about Eternus Continuum, mm -hmm. that people were asking, what's the faction that you're going to go with? And That's like what that, I was saying yeah. Alliance, which is true because they're rad and empires rule. But, truthfully, I knew the continuum was coming, and I knew that yeah. was where I was going to go. So I had to play a little coy. Well, a couple uh, of weeks ago, somebody asked me, I think it was on a live stream, I think Hungerford asked, what I was most excited about, and we hadn't announced the continuum yet, so I couldn't say. Right. Yeah. That's so I was a, just like, the thing that you don't know about yet is yep. what I'm the most excited about. So yeah. I don't know if you guys can see this. It looks like I can see it on, on camera, but you guys should be able to see that hex pattern. Yeah, I can see Because I'm using yeah. really watered down paint, right? So it's seeping into those recesses. But because I did that light base coat, that uh, the yellow is showing through on the hexes. So once this dries, I'll be able to go over it with highlight colors and a little bit of shadows just to push a little bit more of that, uh, that color in there to create a little bit more contrast on the shield. Um, and then it'll basically be done. I'm hoping, I can't see in the photo, I can't see if the back cloak is this color, so I'm just going with it. I'm not trying, you know what, I'm I not trying to do an exact. It's a darker on the Studio One, but it doesn't matter. I'm not trying to do an exact copy of yeah. it, right? And where else, this is base coating right here. What are you base coating so with? The, uh, still the Battle Thrall. Oh, that's that's supposed to be the Battle Dress. Ba 
Oh, the the back of the cloak is supposed to be battle dress. So the cloak is not the same color as the armor, Tony. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah. I couldn't see it in the in the picture. Yeah. So that's why I didn't know. So I was just going for it. All right. I'll just leave that. Let me spread this out a little thinner. I basically painted it. People have decided in the chat though that the fourth faction is pigs in space, but P Y G S pigs in space. Who not like are we to say that they're not correct? Right? Like. At this point, as far as they know, anything is it's possible. Anything. Literally anything is possible. From what I know, none of it's possible. It but could be hunger fruits know, in space. It could be some sort of bees. Man, we oh, saw, no. When I saw those, all the pictures, uh, the concept art for the heavy war jacks yeah. that we showed off yesterday, the, the continuum nemesis, mm -hmm. just that giant backpack and wings. Oh. Why don't I have that model right now? I, I think I the Strike Raptor is my favorite because it's just so beefy. He's super beefy. I, I really like how beefy that Warjack is. But, but yeah, I'm probably playing Continuum, so I'm probably going to get a couple of Nemesis. You know what the funny thing is? We all, we I, think all it, like I think it's Nemesis. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to go with Nemesis. Yeah. Because, you know. The Nemesis is really cool. I'm super excited for that. Doing all right over there, Tony? I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm just kind of, you know, I, I don't know how, how much I need to go over it again, but it's just looking a little patchy, mm -hmm. um, but I know we're going to be adding more I to this. Don't, so I'm just, yeah, don't okay. worry about patchiness. Like, okay. that's not really the true base coat anyways. All right. Like, well, it's, then it's the best foundation color, but it's not, like, that is not the color that the model is going to end up being. All right. Well, then just another minute to make sure I didn't miss any. Armor spots. Nemesis. So this is a total tangent. Uh, I was in a bookstore one day and I saw a children's book on octopuses, and that is what the title of the book was: Octopuses. Yeah. And in the bookstore, I proclaimed loudly. I was like, "Ha! Who didn't edit this book? I can't believe they let this book go out with an incorrect title of octopuses. Clearly, it's octopi." Everybody knows that. Unless and then I immediately doubted myself. I hit the internet. <laughs> octopuses is correct. Like, du double check my math, but, but octopuses uh, is correct. Tony, so if somebody says octopi. Check. Tony, that's not math. Well, proving, we're already proving. I don't know what I'm talking about right now. But yeah, so if somebody says octopi, it's octopi. It'd be like, octopi, I believe, is also correct. But octopuses is, is correct. All right, we're going to do one more uh, little wash, and this is going to be super watered down. Um, this is going to be the Inferno Orange. Okay, and then what am I moving on to for this armor? Because I think I got uh, a pretty good good looking base coat. So on I here. would go in and I would shade with your uh, Thornwood Green mixed with a little bit of your uh, Bile Thrall. Okay. And then after you're done with that, start highlighting up, uh, mixing... Uh, Manoth White base with your Bile Thrall, and then just doing Manoth White base, and then Manoth White base plus Manoth White highlight. Okay. And I'm going to say and this out loud, one for, for viewers, and also as a reminder to me, that when I do this shade, I'm going to do broad stroke shades. Like, I'm just going to do... You could also under, just wash it with undersides. Thornwood Green. Just wash it? Yeah. I might do the quick and dirty one. Uh, do we have mixing medium? Oh, we do. It's right there. Hey, Jordan, is that a black you have over there? Uh, yeah. In front of you. Can I borrow it to, to also paint today? Look, this is awesome. Chat's totally validating me right now on the octopus's octopi discussion. That's rad. The funny thing, Tony, is I can totally see you in a bookstore yelling loudly, octopuses is not a thing. Well, and, but here's the beautiful part. It wasn't about being right, although I do like that, I, especially in <laughs> I front like of my, especially right. for my family. I like to pretend that I know things. Uh, but it was, it's also like I really enjoy those moments where I immediately learn that I'm wrong and then my thought shifts. So it's not about whether it's right or wrong. The octopus's octopi argument is not about, I, I told you so, I'm so smart. It's more like the, 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 the things that I assume are correct i often find out are not so it's here's, just a reminder here's another crazy thing tony yeah authors can name their books whatever they want i mean and it's not wrong the name of a book like there are lots of books that are named things that are weird yeah to get your attention right but that yes like, that's I could true write a book but this isn't and a call it fishes 
But this isn't about the title of the book because it is you're about correct. The title of the book because you. But it made out me. But it made me think that that's right. that's not right. And it was a kids' nonfiction book. You know, let's let's focus on the painting here. <laughs> this isn't about octopuses. So, so much painting, I'm even <laughs> randomly putting paint on something. Even Oz is painting. That's, that's, I am only, that's though, very crazy. I'm helping Jordan out because uh, we're going to be on Table Takes tomorrow, the, the live stream that Hungerford's been on a few You're times. helping me out. You're Jordan helping yourself out. And um, I wanted to take Jordan's model that he painted, the Dusk Wolf that he painted last time, to show off because so many people have probably seen the, the studio model, and I wanted to show a, a Dusk Wolf with different a different mix of weapons. And uh, Jordan didn't have time to base it himself because he's so busy doing other things. So I slapped some, some gritty, gritty stuff on it, and now I'm painting over all the <coughs> random other colors from the paint jobs. So you guys can see on this back here, that's basically done. That's all just washes and glazes. That's the really nice thing about having the, the hexes sculpted in. Oh, yeah, freehanding those hexes 100% would yeah. be... So the thing, it, the work. some of you might have noticed when I did that last wash, um, where I did the, like, the deep crevices here, and then I kind of went over the top of it, and then I wiped it away with my finger. Um, that was so that I kept the really bright yellow on the center and kept the dark orange in the recesses. Um, so you can do that on some some areas. It was just really easy to kind of get in there and wipe that off. Uh, it's a little harder to do on here, uh, and this has dried a little bit m more consistent than I would have liked, so we're going to have to do a little bit more work to bring that back. So we are going to take um, some heart fire. Uh, with a little bit of yellow ink in it. And we're going to start to freehand back in some of these brighter hexes. So um, some of the things that you want to do, or th this is at least something that I thought about when I was doing um, the shield, is I wanted it to look like things were impacting the shield. So um, what I did to do that, although actually we're going to do something else first because I just remembered a step. Um, I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to kind of re-highlight, bring back some of this yellow color in the center, which actually I need a different color for. Cygnus Yellow, where are you? So I'm going to two-brush blend out of the center of this, some Cygnus Yellow with a little bit of yellow ink in it. Uh, chat's yelling at us to center up because I'm not. See, I'm not paying attention today either because normally I'm just sitting over there watching the screen. I can yell at everybody right away. And I can only barely see you guys. I can see the edge of Tony's screen, but I can't see Jordan at all yeah. on my. I don't have uh, enough monitors over here, Tony. I need like 18 monitors. There's so many monitors <laughs> in here right now. <laughs> uh, screw fizzle. Uh, yep, yeah. So um, I just did Zenithal a zenithal prime on the model. And then the first base coat I did was that new bile frog color. And now I'm just going back with battle dress green mixed into a little bit of that yellow or that, that bile thrall. And then I'm just going in and putting in my shades. So just like, I'm just doing quick and dirty, kind of laying it in, in the dark spots and then using another brush to kind of messily two brush blend it out. Yeah. I'm just doing Move a it around. two brush blend on here for the inside so that you get that brighter look on the inside of the shield. And then now we're going to go and start to hand paint in some of these hexes. So I'm just going to pick an area. Uh, we're going to start up in this corner here and a nice point on my brush. And we're going to start kind of doing little circle motions to try and get the top ends of these hexes with a little bit of color in them. And you'll see they start popping out as you paint them. And you're going to build up the color on these hexes. 
And you kind of want an irregular pattern. You don't want to hit the same exact ones. Is that too bright? I'm adjusting my camera a little Scotty bit. Scotty for the win has a relevant question on the Kickstarter. Uh, as a new Kickstarter backer, you don't change your, your backer levels when new things unlock unless you want to up to include, like if you're only backing at the, the command box level and you want to get a bigger thing, you change your backer stuff during the Kickstarter, but the backer kit is the itemized menu system for telling us exactly what you want after the Kickstarter finishes. And I hope that answers your question. Thank you for backing Kickstarter. Thank you. Or Warcaster, that's what I meant to say. So, Jordan. Yeah. We were running a little bit late on the stream today. Yep. Do you... Uh, would you like to do, tell do people I what, talk about it? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> so I got into work, and I had this model prepped and cleaned and mostly assembled. The only thing I needed to do was glue on the shield, this little gun, and the uh, this guy. And I started to do that, and then I broke this leg off, apparently, it just like flew off and like sheared away from the model somehow. Um, and then as I was trying to glue this leg back on, this, this arm, well, first off, the shield fell off just right away as I was trying to do the leg. <clears throat> and then this leg and this arm broke off. So I had to glue those back on. And then this leg, because it was sheared, wasn't sitting properly. So I had to try and pin that darn thing on there, which took another few minutes. Um, and, and then it sheared again. So I was just like, OK. Um, so I had to very carefully um, find a convenient way to, to do that. Not and uh, the all. question's been asked in the chat, and we did not magnetize these models. No, we did not. They're glued together. Because you can always just build the Warjacks in the configuration you like and run them that way. But if you want a little bit more programmability between games, you can magnetize them. <coughs> Screwfizzle also asks if, um, if I can provide a how-to on something, but I'm not sure what the context how do you, is. How do you paint the, the lip of that base? Oh, awesome. is that what we're asking? I mean, well, you get a paintbrush and you get some black paint and then you do it and then you're done. Although I am letting it, I'm letting it sit right now with the first coat on it because since it had a white uh, zenithal highlight on it, there is a little bit of, takes a little extra of extra layering. Yeah. Like if you prime it black and you don't go crazy on your on your paint brushing, like slapping paint all over the edge of the base, you yeah. can usually clean up everything in one coat of black. But. I really want these discs to read as uh, three-dimensional. Morse127 is asking, Jordan, do you think you could dry brush those hexes? No. The uh, No, probably not. Is, it, little, is little that because they're, they're too shallow? They're really, they're really shallow. Like, yeah. they're super-duper-duper duper shallow. Um, and so what does that mean if it's shallow? Why can't you dry brush if it's too shallow? Well, so the whole point of dry... The, the, well, the concept of dry brushing is that you're, you're, you're kind of brushing a big brush across the raised edges of a model to catch detail. And the problem is, because the detail is not raised particularly much, you're, not, yeah. you're just going to cover the whole thing, and it's not going to really get... I mean, it, it might work. Like, the bristles are likely to get down into the yeah, groove or, areas or and leave Yeah, or because it's paint. so flat, it's just going to be patchy. Right, yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of just, you want to do a little bit of an irregular pattern on here. Um, the, the concept that I was going for on the studio one is to replicate, uh, like gunfire, like it was showing the, the hot impact points where, you know, if a bullet or a, a laser impacts the shield, the shield will kind of radiate. It'll flare up a little it'll bit. It'll flare yeah. up and radiate Pulse, with yeah. energy around the impact area. So the, these 
hot points that I'm creating on the shield are to define a little bit of that. Yeah, we had a late person join the Facebook chat asking what we're painting. Um, Tony is painting the Adepticon Coalition Weaver, the Marcher Worlds Weaver that is an exclusive at Adepticon. And Jordan is painting a firebrand with a different mix of weapons than the studio model. Yep. And a different cortex for the head, too. So I'm and we will not be comparing Tony and Oz's models at the end of the stream because the model I'm painting the base on is actually Jordan's model. <laughs> so we're not going to be like, oh, look at how well I painted this model um, at all because, yeah. My base might look better than Tony's base by the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed. Say it likely will. Let me get this armor on. I got to say right now, like, these colors, it, it's... I really want to see it with the highlights because this bile thrall is it's still looking gross to me. Like not a bad paint job, but just the, the the color part of it. And I know it doesn't end up that way. So so between the thornwood green and the the bile thrall, I'm getting just this really weird kind of I don't know pukey color. We'll see where it goes. I'm trusting Jordan on this one because this is that danger zone. If I were painting this on my own without your guidance and I had come to this color combination, I admit I'd be starting to question it right now. Like, is I mean, this that is the recipe? Is this? <laughs> I believe you, <laughs> yeah. right? But I I know that that's how it goes. Like, you get in the middle of something and it's like it's not finished, so it doesn't look the way it's supposed to. Yeah, I mean the I will say the armor on marchers is like the most annoying complicated part about it like getting that that right like shadow versus highlight mm -hmm. is, is tough <sighs> so my, my point with that was you know stick with it try stuff out even if it's you know if you're in the middle of it and it's not looking the way you think it is kind of keep pushing see where you go you get closer to the end it's not working out then then that's fine. Sometimes you know up front, but like I said, I might have abandoned this color scheme earlier unless I had confidence that the next steps were gonna that I knew what the heck start I was paying off. About. Yeah. Well, and you can also always just paint if you're you're using th such thin paints. You could if you didn't like one element of the model. I mean, we've seen paint Jordan it. repaint entire parts of his model yeah. midstream that he didn't like the color on. Yeah, that's true. I have done that. Nothing is a lost cause. So I'm just hitting these the top parts of these hexes with a little bit of a highlight of a, a brighter yellow. Uh, and I'm using a little bit of Mara White to mix into the, the yellow to get that, that nice little pop. You want me to do teal, like Crucible Guard teal? That could actually be pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. That would be really sweet. There's a pot of that on the floor by your foot. Mm. Ooh, well I think. Don't Basically, mind. Look, I don't know which of those. Oh, no, that's not. That's, those that's Meridius blue. Okay, that's Meridius. I wasn't yeah. sure. From the, the lighting yeah. under the tables, <sighs> that great. I wasn't sure if it was that or so Arc right. or whatever. Uh, but there is somewhere in here. Some Eldritch. Should be some. The big question is, would Oz be mad at me if I painted this Eldritch? I, I don't. I don't care. Okay. So part of what we're doing uh, on this stream is painting extra models for live streams. Because right now, the only thing we have me, is two starter boxes worth of painted models in the studio scheme. But to show you the guys, studio models. <laughs> but to show you guys a, uh, a skirmish game with a more appropriate amount of models, because skirmish is up to eight units, so you don't have to play with eight, but... The, uh, the battle box on battle box game we played last week was a little limited because we basically could spawn everything onto the table and then not have anything else to spawn until somebody destroyed something. So we are building up to, in a, a possible live stream game in the near future, having maybe up to eight models per side for a skirmish game. No promises, but so yeah. I, Jordan and I did talk yesterday about making whatever this model's paint scheme not clash too too hard with the studio paint scheme, but you know, it doesn't really matter. You yeah. do what you want. Yeah. So I might just call the shield done for right now, because I don't want to spend two hours painting it. Hit this back a 
little bit. All right, everyone. Are you doing a variant on the studio scheme with white armor instead of silver armor? Or are we going to do the teal? You want to you wanna set up a poll for us, Tony? Oh, those, geez, yeah. Those two on. options. Let me, let me rinse my brushes. Give me just a sec. So we're either doing Crucible Guard teal or we're doing white um, in the places where the, uh, the silver is on the studio model. So while Tony's doing that, Grant on the Facebook chat has a question about how attachments work, and it's one of the things we haven't shown off in a game yet, but it is in the rule book that people have seen. So attachments don't take up spots in your list, so when you build a full force of 15 units, attachments are not part of that. And then attachments are attached on the fly to units when you summon them. So Just for what, pay extra for them, right? Yes. So for example, the Paladin Aegis, the only attachment we've shown off, it what? has so firebrand, right? It has the attachment rule that says it can attach to paladin units. So what? that means you can put them in the enforcer unit, which is the battle box one with the rifles with the with the bayonets, or you can put them in the heavier paladins that have the harbinger cannons. And that just means when you summon it, you can just pay one extra, and that guy is now part of that squad. But you can only have one attachment per squad. So you couldn't put three Aegis models into one squad. But if you had three different attachments that could all attach to Paladin units, when you summon your Paladin Enforcers, they could also have each of those attachments in them if you paid the extra cost. Travis is asking you to clarify Paladin squad or Paladin unit. Did you, or did you just do that? It's, it's squad. Paladin it's squads. Because uh, attachments only attach to squads. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say unit every once in a while when I'm talking without paying a lot of attention because it is the war machine word for squad. Right. But, but yeah. Attachments only attached to squads. All right, Tony, can I borrow that for a second? This model? Yep. And Menoth White Highlight and the Bile Thrall. Bile Thrall. Uh, yeah. White. Oh, Menoth White Highlight, not base. They're Menoth Man, Man White Base. Base. Yeah. And, uh, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to, while this straw poll is going on, I'm going to paint one of these shoulders so you can kind of get the, the balance of color okay. that it's supposed to have. I'm just going to do this All right I'm going to watch over here. But you got to center up. Oops, sorry. See, look at that. You take the model out of my hand, I'm right back on to, mm -hmm. back keep, to producer keeping mode. the ship in line. Yeah, everybody that yelled teal in the chat should go to that. Yeah, I put it. Uh, I put the straw poll link in the chat, so you should be able yeah. to go vote, and then we will choose from there. So if you're if you're yelling in chat, that's not voting. That's not helping. And center up, Jordan. Gosh darn it! This you is put, you didn't put it in the Facebook chat though, Tony. Did you? I did. Yeah, it's you there. Did? It's. I'm looking at it. No, I only see it in the Twitch chat. In hindsight, so I think I actually changed this on the, the actual recipe. But I think the base on the actual recipe is, is Menoth White base now. <clears throat> and then it's shaded with the, the Bile Thrall. So Striker's saying that uh, Jordan flexes on Tony real fast. Jordan flexes on me all the time when it comes to painting, <laughs> constantly. Of course, I'm going in going, Jordan, how do you take care of this? It's like, yeah, so flexing, the, flexing hard. Do you want the real but, answer or do you want the, the right answer? But Yeah, but validated, right? I'm trying to learn stuff. People are asking if we're, if we're going to show off some alt paint scheme stuff for this when it actually launches. And yeah, I believe that we are possibly even in the gallery kind of things on the websites and stuff. There might be some alt paint scheme models. I know some people are working on some yep. alt paint schemes. We did see for I don't the know if that'll only be on social media or if it'll be officially in rule books and stuff. But. Yeah. Well, the model I'm painting up, this, this Alt Adepticon um, Weaver, so that's pretty we close. saw Stu Spengler's version of it yeah. on DevChat a couple weeks ago. I thought that was the, was that not the Primecast? Might the have been the Primecast. Yeah. It, I think maybe it was But Primecast. on the model cam, there, there are pictures of, of this model All right. with a black. I think, I think we've given chat the, uh, the real answer. Can you find oh. Eldritch over there? I think the answer is Teal. Results. What are the results? Oh, gosh. Oh, All Teal, right. yeah. 17 to 5. The Teals have it. We got Arcane. 
No, I need t I need Eldritch. Well, maybe we don't get Eldritch. Well, that's maybe unacceptable. We get arcane. What's this? What's this? There's Eldritch. What would you do without me? Um, go over there and pick it up myself. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that one. Um, hey Tony, can you do me a favor? Yeah. Can you pull up? A photo of a firebrand for me. I will. Let me finish mixing his paint real fast. So we are going to be replacing the silver with this elder. How's that? Yeah, that's good. That's perfect. Do you need it to stay up? Uh, yeah. Okay. And then make sure that I'm on camera. Perfect. Perfect, 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 perfect. Someone asked if, if uh, the chat would think that the Marcher Worlds would look good in hot pink armor. Any well executed paint job looks good no matter what colors you pick that's true as long as you as long as you pick colors that you know don't contrast in crazy ways to make people throw up or whatever but yeah you could do hot pink armor with other colors that are complementary and execute it well i need more not bright enough And Adrian on Facebook says it sounds like the game is pretty quick with only 15 activations per player. Well, remember, that's, that's not 15 activations for models. That's 15 turns. So you do get two activations, uh, a unit of any kind of in a solo during your turn. So there are, there are more than 15 model activations. And then some people just play slow. So always, always keep in mind that, especially when you're new to a game, learning all the ins and outs of strategies and tactics are going to take some people longer than others. I, I definitely fall into that category. I'm a slow player. I wasn't going to say anything. I get eye that. rolls all the time when, yeah. when we're playing games. Yeah. It's like, come on. But at least you don't have to remember to use your feet, Tony. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> So, everyone in chat who voted for Teal, apologize a little bit to Oz because we're not going to have matching models on the live stream. Yeah, it's good enough. All right. That'll be, we'll, we'll just never summon that model. It'll just, it'll just be on the reserves but never come on the table. But we're also probably going to play with this uh, Dusk Wolf you painted, which is similar is to... Is similar enough, yeah. But isn't really the well, same. Well, to be fair, this is a pretty legitimate alt scheme because it keeps the same glow... And it keeps the same black on the the other parts of the armor. Yeah. And the same yellow, like, armor bits. So it could very well just be a, a sweet alt armor yeah. color, which I might try and get some fluff written for. Well, but you could also be, just... Cool, I think. You could also just decide that your your narrative is that, that no two warjacks have exactly the same... Well, I think they would look. be, like native to a different planet. Sure. So they'd have their like their native colors or whatever would be the the concept for that. But I'm sure there've been lots of real world military engagements where like tanks from different Man. battalions with different camo schemes or what or jets that are not quite exactly the same have fought side by side, so. Yeah. It's not the end of the world if every single model you have on the table isn't the same. Correct. Because people were talking earlier about what heavies they like, and I might pick up uh, a Morning Star to paint, and not necessarily build an entire Iron Star force, or I might play it in skirmish mode or whatever. And if I do that, then maybe I don't want to paint every single one of those models the exact same color no. scheme. Ragtag. I am. I am Groups. definitely 
probably a continuum player, and I'm not necessarily going to paint them all exactly the same. Because like we've said in the rule book and on chats and stuff, you also need to differentiate your squads in some way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if one model, if, if three different squads each lose one model, those, those individual models are in your reserves, but they, they can't resummon as a new squad. Right. They still belong to those squads. So I'll probably do variations. The, the Thamar block? I'll probably do variations on their trench coats or something like that to differentiate the squads. Nice. Yeah, so you can do it on the model. You can do it on the base. Um, I, I definitely prefer doing it on the model so it's more visual. The fun part is trying to figure out how to make a model look cohesive with the rest of the force and be. Yeah. Like awesome. you can flip colors, right? If you got black with like red yeah. detail, you could paint one squad red with black details. Mm -hmm. Something simple doesn't have to be crazy. Um, and uh, Brother Chaplain Cage is asking about um, kitting out the Morning Star with missile pods and stuff. Generally, there's no restriction on where things can be placed as long as they're arms and shoulders, but there are restrictions on the total number of weapon points. So, so we've got hard points which is the number of attachments. So like the Dusk Wolf has one shoulder and two arms. The Scourge for the Continuum has one arm and two shoulders because it has that great big crab claw. It can't take off. And the Heavies generally have two shoulders and two arms. So as long as you're putting shoulder weapons on shoulders and arm weapons on arms, that's the only thing you have to worry about legality there. And then you also generally can't go above a certain number points-wise in the number of weapon points you're spending. So like we could have put two rifle bayonets on this firebrand with the null shoulder because the null cannon is a three point shoulder and both those other arms are one point arms. We could have put one null cannon and two shields. So it just kind of depends on for the morning star and the other heavies and stuff. If you want to do double missile shoulders, you're just going to have to figure out what else fits in its weapon points. And I have no idea what those numbers are off the top of my head. I have not looked at them recently, so I'm not going to make promises. But I'm guessing you can probably put a couple of those rocket shoulders and then some cheaper arm weapons on. And also keep in mind, a lot of the arm weapons and shoulder weapons are shared between the different systems. So the, the Strike Raptor can use railgun shoulders just like the Dusk Wolf. Not, not every one of the weapons on the heavies can go on the lights, but often many of the light weapons can go on the heavies. All right, I'm definitely going to paint my army like this now. You all have convinced me. Uh, <laughs> Travis wants to know what continuum list I like to play. I can't tell you that because you don't know all the models and stuff. Oh. Also, also right now I've been pretty flexible been about like, because we're mostly playtesting stuff when we play games. So I haven't played a lot of, this is the army I would like to build and paint. It is, I'm gonna try to take four vassal squads this game and two nemesis warjacks and we'll whatever. We'll see how busted that is. Yeah, so there's a lot, it's a, the, the, right now there's a lot more what combinations of interesting things can I try and play test than this is what I'm going to do right now. But yeah, there's also models you guys don't know about. Yeah. I might play a playtest game today with a model I'm pretty excited about that no one, no one knows about, and and I'm not even sure where it's at on the stretch. Yeah. Board. It depends. We get more backers and we hit stretch goals faster. Then more more stretch goals from the future will show up on the on the feed and you'll see other things you don't know about right now. Like blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah. If I was typing this out, I would just put like a bunch of X's right there in that yep. sentence. Yep. It's true. Because you don't get to know what it is. Lunchbox wants to know if you think gray is a good substitute for black on that paint job. Yeah, I mean, this black will have a lot of gray in it because it's going to get highlighted, but yeah, gray would work. Gray would work just fine. So Travis Shore is asking, I guess Travis joined us late and is asking what we're painting. 
So this is not the Continuum, which is a third faction Warjack. This is a Firebrand, which is the Iron Star Alliance, which I don't know if they're faction one or two at this point, because I don't know which ones we showed off first. But this is a Firebrand with a slightly different build. I'm pretty sure we showed Marchers off first. first. Yeah, I think we did, but I'm not sure. Yeah. So this is, this is from the first two factions. And uh, yes, this, the Weaver Tony is painting is effectively an arc node if you are coming at this game from an understanding of War Machine. But they are two very different they, yeah, games. The, the games. Somebody earlier in the chat said, I love this game because it's basically War Machine in space. And yes, on a narrative level, it's kind of a little bit War Machine in space because there are still War Jacks and you know, Warcaster leading the army and that kind of stuff. But functionally, they are completely separate games that share almost no mechanical Mechanical concepts. similarities, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. This is cool. And yes, no tiefling. The the alt warjack poses, stretch goal. I believe it says something about additional weapons, and those additional weapons will go on, on this on the existing warjacks, the same, as on those alt sculpts. Because the alt are just reposes of the uh, of the standard warjacks you've seen so far. And um, Capotini, you don't, you don't arc, arc through the staff. That's not how it works. So they're not arc nodes. The word node is nowhere in their rules. And the word arc, arc does not mean the same thing. And the word arc does not mean the same thing. <laughs> arc is a substance. Yes. Arc is the, is the lifeblood of the universe. Or galaxy, technically, because Sirius is a galaxy, not a universe. So yeah, you, if you were arcing anything, it would be you were arcing ciphers, but you're not arcing because, cause yeah, because that's the juice. Yep. So I'm still trying to get all, the, all these areas base coded. Hope hope everybody who picked teal is happy with their decision. I am happy with your decision, <laughs> personally. So good job, everyone. Y'all y'all did did good. Keep an eye on him though till he paints over it. Yeah. Next time you see it, it'll it'll be a different <laughs> color. Completely. What happened? Jordan hit one of his moods and totally changed <laughs> everything he was doing. It's your prerogative. You can do whatever you want. True. My model, my rules, my choices. But I do like getting input from other people, and especially it can, chat. It can be fun, especially when you're not, you know, when you're not prepared for it or even particularly interested in in something that someone suggests. Doing it anyway will can yeah. can yield. Some I'm also like surprising really, results. really, really indecisive almost all of the time. So, <laughs> I like how you said I have really no experience almost. with you, that. You, you can't even be decisive about how indecisive you are. I mean, I had to make Tony make the decision as to where we went for lunch yesterday because I just couldn't make the decision. He was just like Jordan Pick. I'm like, where, I'm like wherever, and I'm and like I was Tony like, Pick. I was like, how about this place? He's like, I don't really know about that. I was like, then pick. I'm cool. I know what I don't want, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't necessarily know what I want. If that makes sense. I yeah, hope, I hope it, there's somebody out there in chat who has does. a similar experience it makes to myself. A lot of sense. So I, I have to uh, deep dive on a Snow Chiefling question. Okay. Clarification. They're asking if new light warjacks were made available via stretch goals. So something, they're, they're in brackets, they're saying something like a moon coyote because of Duskull. Okay. Um, could they then, as part of their backer stuff, swap out moon coyotes for Duskulls? Um, that is all going to be part of backer kit stuff at the end of this situation. But I will tell you that the stretch goals for other Warjacks that are in there right now, they're called like alt Warjacks, those are just reposes of the core Battlebox, Firebrand, and Scourge, and that kind of stuff. 
No. So we're not we're not putting out any kind of other warjack like a moon coyote as part of that stretch goal. We are doing a dusk wolf that's in a different pose. Yes. Um, however, generally speaking, if there were hypothetically other warjacks to be released as a back like as a stretch goal. Generally speaking, because most of the things that are a part of the packages are like starter bundles, yeah. you wouldn't be able to swap them out. You would theoretically be able to add them as add-ons, but they wouldn't replace or couldn't replace things that were already part of the bundles because those are preset bundles for starter. Like, they're starter bundles, basically. Yeah. So, and, uh, if that makes sense. That's, are, and that's not necessarily 100% oh yeah, correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's likely to be the case. And uh, the chat is still fishing for fourth faction spoilers. And I'm not going to say anything. All I'm going to say is faction. tomatoes. I that's all I'm going to say. Don't even say tomatoes. tomatoes. I'm that not might. even sure I know what the answer is, to be honest. I, honestly, yeah. I, I it know. May, it may be new enough and secret enough. I know many, many things. I, know. I won't hear any of them. I know a few Despite... Things. My elite status as video producer here. Oh, elite. I am on the end of the chain when it comes to information about what's coming. So I'm often one of the last people to know about the cool stuff. I think the only reason why I'm further up on that list than you, Tony, is because I literally, my office is <laughs> smack <laughs> in the middle of the playtest area distance? right now. <laughs> yeah, Tony, Tony, Tony's on the opposite end of the building from the the standard office staff kind yeah. of situation. But Jordan is squatting in our playtest area. <laughs> I'm not squatting in <laughs> your playtest area. You're literally squatting in our playtest area. That okay, it's not, not by choice, okay. I didn't say that you were that you you did it by choice, but you're forced to to take up a space that is not your final office space in the building. Yeah. And it's right where one of my playtest tables will be eventually. Uh, actually that should hopefully be changing sometime in the next uh, week or so. Yeah. Nice. They've, um, they've been making making steady progress on that room being ready. Honestly, I'm I'm hoping to get it finished tomorrow. Yeah, cool. That way I can move in on on Monday. Would be really nice. I'm like this is fun. I'm just like zoning out doing these little details here. Mm -hmm. just I I will painting. say for for those of you who have picked marchers as your uh as your starting faction, I hope you enjoy painting backpacks and satchels because you will be painting lots of them. Did you see somebody posted on the Facebook group? Lots who, of them. A soldier made entirely of pouches. Uh, that's not like, far off. The, <laughs> their, their head is a pouch and all their arms are a pouch and their gun is just made of pouches. Yep, yep. So yeah, <laughs> it's not that bad. It's, it's not, not, no, it's, it's not, not that it's bad. It's not that There are that a lot of pouches, pouches on them though. There yeah. certainly are... They're they're pouch folk. They're, they're very pouchy. And Aiden in in the chat is asking if we've covered um, how weapons are restricted on the warjacks. And yes, literally moments ago, Aiden, I explained that entire thing. You missed it just before <laughs> you joined. Um, but relevant to your to your question, you cannot put weapons in places they don't go. So shoulders and arms are restricted to shoulders and arms. So, like, the Talon missile launcher on the Dusk Wolf is a shoulder mount. You could not put three Talon missile launchers on a Dusk Wolf because you cannot put them on the arms. That's not saying we'll never make a weapon that isn't dual-purpose arm and shoulder. And that's not to say that somebody's not going to buy three kits and take three sniper rifles and put them on all of the weapons. Super you, loadout. you do yeah. you. I mean, it's not legal, but yeah. it would look cool. If you would just want to make a cool... If you want to make a cool-looking robot sci-fi model kit, you do whatever you want. But if you want to play it in games with other people that have the reasonable expectation that you're following most <laughs> of the rules, then be, be, be that person, not the other kind. Oh, man. Oh, that's so funny. I, I have no problem with people bending rules basically in their homes. Yeah. Like, if you want to create your own scenarios, if you want to create your own formats, if you want to say, we're going to play skirmish mode, but we're going to use 10 things in reserves, or whatever, do that. And if you even say, I've magnetized all my stuff, so I'm going to put 15 of this thing on my warjack. I'm going to put it, I'm just going to cover my firebrand with force fields. That's all I'm going to have. Just, I'm going to replace the backpack with a shield. I'm going to 
replace the face with the shield, do whatever. You can do that as long as your opponent agrees with you because it's all about consent. That's true. Much like most of the rest of life, when you interact with other people, consent is a big deal. you should make sure you have their permission to do things they're not going to expect. Like stealing their tomatoes. <laughs> like something about tomatoes. <laughs> hey, man. I just like saying tomatoes. It's a cool word. Okay? There's nothing wrong with saying tomatoes. Uh, Andrew on the Facebook chat wants to know if they can get a close-up of your shield, Jordan. I think that's about as close as I'm going to be able to get without it being super unfocused. And, and Morse, uh, any time that I speak, there are life lessons. I don't know you, about that. You can't avoid it. I don't know about that. Nope, every time. If a conversation with me lasts long enough, it will it will turn into, into a life session life conference life. with Oz. Because that's really all I care about. This is mediocre that I'm putting on here, by the way, you guys. There was um, the the orange for the like armor plates is painted much differently than the glow is. Um, it's got a little bit of like coal black in it. Uh, it's got mediocre in it, uh, and that's so that it is easily identifiable and differentiated between the other parts of the model. Tony, I also don't know if you've been paying attention to chat enough, but your your octopus conversation is still ongoing. Still going. There's a lot of octopi, octops, octopodes, all kinds of. Yeah, I saw the octopodes thing. That was there's, interesting. Also, they're just they're. They're deep diving on the combinations of time of day and animal. <laughs> we got dawn tiger. We got noon bear. You know. Noon bear. Noon I bear. like it. Noon bear. Noon bear. Um, I did see a comment earlier. Someone was asking, I think it was Stryker, if I uh, made the videos for the Warcaster and or for the Warcaster Kickstarter, and I did. You did. I did That's make those videos. I pretty much, yeah. Like Tony, if it's video, video related producer. at Privateer Press, there's a ninety nine percent chance that that I had something to do with it and probably most to do with it. The other thing that you could do, you know, if you do want a noon bear, is I don't know how good people are at freehanding and I don't know how much space that some people think um, exists on these models, but you could do some like airplane customization art on yeah. like shoulder pads and stuff could like the dusk wolf has has a fairly large center armor spot right above its head yes and a big shoulder like if you wanted to paint some crazy like nose art from a fighter plane on your guys like i i could name my dusk wolf the witching hour weasel if i wanted and paint a crazy witching hour weasel. crazy witch weasel the on its shoulder hour weasel. That'd be cool. I don't have any. I, I haven't physically seen any of the heavies to see how much surface area they have on them. But that kind of stuff's always an option. I don't and, know if there's and, much surface area with all those dope jet packs. Yeah. And we've done that kind of stuff. I mean, Matt Wilson did that poster, which was a no quarter cover of, of an ironclad with like Haley art on it. And that kind of stuff's always fun in in differentiating your different vehicles slash robots slash whatever. We're at 11.30, which is fine. We talked about doing a longer stream today, and we started late. Yep, yep. So we're just cruising along, cruising doing our thing. along. If you want us to stop chat and turn it off, just say so. Tony, would they ever say that they wanted us to turn off the stream ever? At least as a majority. I don't know what people will do. I mean, I don't, I don't tell you how to live your life, chat. People that are currently taking their lunch in various time zones mm -hmm. come and go, but there are some people that have nothing else to do today besides watch you paint a model. They Heck might yeah. never want to be done. And I appreciate it greatly. Oh, the lunchbox says, "Yeah, turn it off. I'm tired of you." Yeah, there's always one. Hashtag cancel Tony. <laughs> Hashtag cancel Tony. I haven't been on in a while. We were talking about that this I've, morning. I have told Tony. The other day that I missed having him on as a uh, as second chair. Morse wants to know what you're thinking about for hair color, Tony. 
You know, I I hadn't given it exactly what I was going to do, but but I definitely wanted to go the more um, kind of punky punky color. I yeah. do like the idea of having a bright bright color hair, uh, but I haven't really decided how I'm going to do it yet. So you could silver over there. That'll be kind of kind of what I hit when I get what to color? it. Silver, silver. silver. I did Stand not. Silver. I have uh, pig iron would be great. All right, quicksilver. That's not pig iron. Uh, it literally has silver in the title. Yeah. You did ask for silver. Well, excuse me. I would like pig iron uh, specific. Pig iron. Perfect. Come on, camera. Nope. Striker wants infernal orange hair. We've got to vote for pink. We could do that. Okay, maybe a. I don't know, maybe like a red violet or something. The studio one's got like a really bright, fiery orange hair. Screw feels wants you to frost the tips. I'll I could frost them. To, I'll frost the tips. I can do that. It's one of the things I'm kind of looking forward to in painting continuum. So far, no hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's masks and cloaks. Yeah, there's some there's some cloth, and there's a lot of metal, and there's some skin too. There's some pistol grip chainsaws, but no, no hair. <laughs> uh, they also want to know what glow you're going to do, Tony. Uh, blue do studio glow. Blue though, glow. Maybe? Yeah, studio blue glow. The teal glow. If I get that far, I don't know if I'm going to get to it on the stream today. I just want to get this far enough so that Oz can can use it. Yeah, that's kind of my my goal too. Is I gotta I want to make it look good, but I gotta work quickly because yeah, I've been taking a little bit too much time. Just have fun with it. But. It's time to to focus down and get things painted for Oz. Make me sound like some sort of horrible overseer over well, here. Well, you are a horrible overseer, but I mean, isn't that isn't that how Hungerford sees you? No, not at all. <laughs> not even a little bit. <clears throat> also, that has not been my experience. Oz is a wonderful human being. And uh, anybody asking in the chat about the engineering of these models, we can't answer 100% in a kind of global way. I like mean, what, are, do you, what do you want? People are asking, like, how many parts of a human model's in and that kind of stuff. And, and this, so this model the model's in like three was pieces? in f four, four parts. Four, four? Yeah. Body, backpack, arm, head. And I did have to work a little bit. I, I had to kind of, there's this connection point right here where the hose from the staff and the arm connect to the backpack. And when you're putting this model together, one or the other, you want to make sure that you prep in advance. I, I recommend making this connection point and letting it dry very securely because when you lock the arm into socket, um, depending on how the metal has come out, you might have to do a little bit of shifting to get the backpack to sit on its spot. If you glue the backpack on first and then try to glue the arm on, uh, you may not be able to get it aligned because there's a, you know needs to have the right the right tilt fit. So if you build this whole piece right here as one and then fit it on after the fact, I think you'll have a little easier time getting it to sit correctly. Scroopizzle says they haven't started on any Riot Quest models yet because they're trying to finish Infernals. Mm. Riot Quest models are also really good palette cleansers. Yeah, they are. If you've been painting, really good like for that. Infernals have a lot of skin and stuff, so you're probably probably not using a lot of different colors when you're painting an Infernal army necessarily. But after you finish like a, a entire 10 model squad of Grievers or whatever, just taking a break and painting Captain Crawtooth or something can... Uh, can like loosen up your your creative process. You get a lot of fun with it. I, I'm painting up a, a, a Harlow Hold'em High for Jeff Hanley, and I just decided to paint him up like a traditional Revolutionary War red yeah, coat, yeah. just for fun. Yeah. Yeah, I painted mine uh, in dark greens to match my my Rulik army, but I did not paint my Bam Fist in any. I painted my Bam Fist more like the studio scheme, with some reds and blue hair and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff.
Yeah, I go. I can kind of go both ways sometimes on on models like that. There's a there's a comfort in uh, for me in painting like faction models because it's like once you've determined what it's going to look like, it's just kind of built out for you, right? Yeah. Like once you know this color scheme, every time you paint, you know your Marcher Worlds models, you're just it's going to be this. But that can get really tiring painting the same stuff over again. The opposite side is that you have something like Riot Quest, where you can, you know. Uh, thematically make all your models unique. They don't have to look the same. Uh, but then I can also feel kind of drained sometimes on trying to make decisions every time I paint a new model of trying to decide what this model is going to be and I don't make what any I'm going to paint. Decisions. And it, it, can be, it can be exhausting. I just kind of start slinging paint and see what happens. Pick, some, pick a bottle you like. So it's a yeah. good way to paint. Like I, I knew that I wanted my crawtooth to have a white coat and a white hat. And I think I went with I might have went with frostbite because I didn't want it to be perfectly white. I wanted to have, you know, a little bit of um, another shade to it. And sometimes the model just chooses for you. Like, you can paint a Gator Man skin any color you want, but it'll look weird because it's not green. Let's see. I think may not be quite ready, but I can start doing it on some of these. I have to go around a little bit more, but I won't spend too much more time. I want to get the next set of highlights on here, Jordan. So what, am I moving on to Menoth White Highlight for this guy? Yeah. For the highlight? I mean, unfortunately, you, we're, we're kind of having Tony do this all out of order. Usually I would, well, the, the process for painting the studio ones are airbrush the armor, once the armor's airbrushed, do the glow, and then paint the armor, like finish the armor. <clears throat> we do what we can do. But we do what we do, and we do what we can. And sometimes we do what we can't. Yeah, the only thing I'm thinking right now for my, for my color scheme for Continuum is Amethyst Rose. Yep. Because I really like that color. Yeah, I was thinking about doing my... Uh, Continuum in red. Yeah. yeah I'm so I'm at least going to probably do their, their coats and stuff in that and then slap it on some of the, like the Marauder and some of those models in, in small quantities. I'm, I'm super excited to really dig deep on the, the studio paint schemes for yeah. the Continuum stuff. Um, can't wait for you guys to see that stuff. It's going to look really good. Had a bit, bit of an uh, epiphany about it the other day, about what my goals and plans were for it. So y'all are just going to have to wait and see. Jordan, you're painting things off camera right now. So barely. Barely. When is more information about the heroes coming out? Hmm. Good question. Hmm. Hopefully soon. Reference my previous comments about how I'm the last one to know stuff. <laughs> I was kind of surprised that the heroes were just in the in the campaign and not stretch goals. I was a little bit I was a little bit expecting them to be to be stretch goals and not just be there, but I think it's cool they are there. But you can tell a little bit from them by the way they look. And we did say that uh, Raxus, whose first name or title is a word I can't pronounce without reading it, and I still can't pronounce it that way. <laughs> um, but Raxus is a weaver. So... But that's as much as I'm going to say about rules. But one of them has pistols and one of them has swords. So you can kind of tell what they're, what they're going to do a little bit on the table that way. And we still have something like 15 days to go on this Kickstarter. I, think. I know. According, let me let me let me check and make sure that I'm not crazy. Let me scroll all the way up to the top of this. Window. I believe you're right. 15 yeah. or 16 so days. So we are 15 days. We are 15 days away from the end, and right now we have a little over 1,200 backers and 244 thousand dollars. So we're still a little ways away from from 250. Okay. 
And you can expect more previews and stuff as stretch goals unlock and as other things happen. Tell your friends. And yep. if your friends is already pledged, make new friends. <laughs> <laughs> and tell them. Well, and and some of our stretch goals aren't even monetary, so you can you can like retweet things and like the Facebook pages and stuff to unlock. True, that's very true. Wallpapers and things like that. So yeah, uh, and that also spreads more likes and shares and things on social media. Spreads who's seeing it and can maybe make you get some new friends, Tony. <laughs> Tony needs new friends apparently. <laughs> I know, Tony was saying he might need new friends. I got enough friends in this building. One could say we have too many. Oh, that should be... Yeah, you made that inside bit. Orange. So, uh, remember... Morse, was, Morse oh. wants to know when we'll be seeing some of their models. I'm guessing that, that that's a question about the continuum. Their models? What are their models? I, I'm guessing that Morse is asking when the continuum models will get shown Oh, off. yeah. And you have them in your painting queue right now. Yes. Yeah. They are basically the next thing I'm going to be working on. Yeah. So I would expect that to be soonish, but no so, promises. Yeah. I, I will basically be starting them today. And uh, Brother Chaplain Cage, Danny does count as multiple friends. You are correct. Danny has enough energy for at least three people. <laughs> Takes up multiple friend slots. He does. Depending on your, <laughs> depending on your you know, mental persuasion, whether mm -hmm. you're an uh, extrovert or introvert or other things, ambivert and things, yeah, Danny, Danny does take up more friend slots to certain people. I'm having a good time right now. You're having a good time, you yeah. said? That's that's excellent. I'm so I'm gonna answer I'm gonna answer a, a, a rules design philosophy question a little bit, Snow Tiefling, but not deep dive onto it. They're asking why there are no blue dice. Because we we've built other games off the red, white, and blue strike dice. But Omega Protocol was the first time these molds got created for these dice. I created Omega Protocol, uh, the dice system in it at least, based on the fact that I found a whole bunch of old playtest dice from Monpoc. Because when I got here in 2011, Monpoc was at its tail end of that first wave of Monpoc. So by the time I started working on Omega Protocol in like 2012-ish, I just came across a big box of full-sized dice with the Monpoc stuff on them. And I built that system with no white dice. I wanted blue dice to be the, the baseline, which are black in Omega Protocol. And then I wanted red dice to be the cool thing. And in this game, we wanted the white dice to be the baseline dice that are used for attacks and damage and standard stuff. And then we wanted a die that was a better version of those dice to be the bonus die, the die you get for having arc on you or for doing damage or successes or whatever on attack rolls. So that's why we, we left blues out, because we wanted a baseline die and then a substantially better die to be the die that you get for being powered up and stuff. That's not to say that we won't ever do anything else, but I would not expect blue dice to get added to the system in any core way. And, and the game also comes with a D6, because there's, D6s get used for certain things in the game, rolling off for who goes first and also scenario play and that kind of stuff can be decided with a D6. So I think we're probably getting close to needing to wrap up. Yeah, yeah. It is uh, 11.45. So I'm liking where it's going. What I was saying before about this Largely model. Largely base coded now too, which is yeah. nice. What are you going to do with that gun though? I don't know. I don't know. Probably gonna be black would be my guess. Yeah. 
All right, chat, last minute questions, comments, whatever you like. Jordan will be happy to answer them for you. <laughs> I'm too busy painting this thing. Tony would also ha be happy to answer your questions and comments as well. Yeah, if I have answers, I mean, I could make some up. So Krennic Gaming has a, has a question about third-party things in all games, and that is completely up to TOs and opponents and stuff. If you show up to play a game with any kind of wacky dice, then you should always ask, ask the organizer of the event and or your opponent in a casual game if they mind you're using weird dice. Because yep. I know people who use dice that I consider illegible, but in casual games, I don't mind because I trust them to you know, tell me what they roll. But in, a, but in a more competitive environment, I would rather be able to see for myself what your dice are showing than have to have you interpret your dice for me. Yep. Striker saying, my painting ability has approved a lot since the last time I was in the second chair. Well, that's what happens when we practice. Uh, Tony's been painting. I've been painting a lot, lot more lately. Or, or literally your pairing ability, which is what that, that post says. I don't know if Striker's on a phone and it's going to oh. autocorrects. But that might be how I Maybe you're myself. just really good at pairing things. <laughs> <laughs> Combining two things. I didn't have any other. Should we should we settle settle things up, Tony? Let's settle things up. All right, all right I'm gonna. Let me finish one. I'll thing see you all there. later. Thank you. I'm gonna swing over here. All right, this is where we're at for right now. It's mostly base coated. I want to thank everybody for showing up today. Sorry, it looks like we don't have any P3 painters for you. Uh, we'll see you next week for something else exciting, hopefully, and. Uh, <laughs> We always have something. Exciting. We'll try to be on. We'll also try to be on time. I don't know what it is yet. Okay, I don't yeah. know what it is. We'll we'll let you guys know. Thanks again for coming. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to back Warcaster. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for watching. Audio.